All right, guys, so I'm here at the Masters Overclocking Arena from MSI. I'm here at the Welcome booth right now. I'm actually sort of co-hosting this event, so I'm not just arriving right now, but I'm just gonna show you guys sort of some of the stuff going on here. This is at the pole position uh, Las Vegas Raceway. So uh, anyone who comes to the event can also sign up, I believe, to do some go-karting, and then they can also check out the live overclocking over there. So we got some swag. We have uh, vibrating hand grenades, which is bizarre. And then we also have some dog tags and whatnot. So there's a little sign. So I'm gonna head in and we're gonna check out some of the new products that MSI is showing off. Oh, apparently there's also a buffet coming out. So I'm gonna have to check that out in a little bit. All right, here we go. So this is the video card table. So there's some stuff here that we're already familiar with. We've got the N460 GTX Hawk, which as you guys probably know, was one of the first, well, I believe it was the first GTX 460 to achieve a one gigahertz overclock on air. It's been quite a popular product over its life cycle. We've also got a few things here that are brand new. So this is one that I've never seen before. This is a GTX 580 Lightning. So I'll have a look at the overall specs here. It has a 16 phase PWM design. That is one of the most critical aspects for an overclocking card. It also has two eight pin PCI Express connectors and it is capable of running in up to three way, probably four way too, but up to three way SLI configurations because it does have two SLI bridges. We've also got voltage readout points here on the top of the card. And it looks like we're using a, let's see, how many heat pipes is that on the uh, stock cooler? This is a twin Frozer 3 design stock cooler with dual 92 millimeter fans. And it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five heat pipes directly over the GPU there. So that's a pretty cool one. We've also got a uh, Radeon 6850 and 6970. So the 6850s using their uh, ever popular Cyclone cooler. And then uh, this one right here. So this is a 6970 Lightning. So this uses an 18 phase PWM design, two gigs of memory, just like a normal 6970. And what else have they done here to make this card custom? Well, I can see a couple of things right off the bat. The dual bio switch, well, it's been moved, I guess. We've also got the voltage readout points as well as the dual eight pin power connectors we saw on the GTX 580. And last but not least, we have gold plated connectors for our dual mini display port, HDMI and dual DVI connectors. I didn't notice that on the GTX 580 Lightning, but you can see that that one has a gold plated display port, HDMI and dual, H and dual DVI as well. So let's move along here. We're gonna have a look. I'll be doing unboxings of all of these motherboards over the next uh, couple weeks, but we've got some H67 boards. So these are supporting Intel's latest Core i3 and Core i5. Well, they support Core i7 as well, but I probably wouldn't be putting a Core i7 on an H67 board because if you're buying a Core i7, I would definitely recommend spending a couple extra bucks to get a K-series processor. And the H67 chipset does not support multiplier changing so you really shouldn't use a k-series processor in it these are the boards that i'm more interested in these are their p67 boards so we're moving from the lowest end so this is a c-series board meaning it only has single graphics up to their lowest end g-series board so this is a great value board that has support for uh oh there's a lot of noise there right now okay well hopefully i can drown it out has support for dual sli and crossfire and 8x 8x mode let's move on along so the gd65 is an upgraded version of the gd55 so it actually uses the same pcb same number of power phases there's just a couple key differences so you can see there are some spots on this board where there are things that appear to be well missing so let's show you what this one has it has more sata 6 gigabit per second ports it also has let's see what else what else is changed oh it has dual e sata ports on the back whereas the 55 board does not. And I, I recall seeing more changes when I did my unboxing, but I think it's, oh yeah, there we go. We got V checkpoints here at the top, whereas here we only have solder points for them. So those are a couple of the key changes that they've made on the 65 version. And it looks like this one is actually mislabeled. This is, has the same label in front of it as that one, but this is a P67A GD80. So this one's supporting up to three-way SLI and Crossfire. You've also got a supplementary power connector here in order to have full support for all those GPUs. It does have more power phases using a 
Oh man, it looks like a 10 plus 3 phase power design, but I'm actually not 100% sure. One thing you know for sure is, is that it is using Dr. Moss and their military class 2 concept. What else do we have on this one? We've got SATA 6 gigabit, we've got, uh, wow, 6 USB 3.0 ports on the back panel. So that's a pretty exciting thing to see as well as, look at that, two more additional front panel USB 3.0 ports. So we got a TV, we got the racetrack back there. So that's a pretty cool thing to be able to check out. I know a lot of the guys who are here for the event are also uh, racing. Here we've got a little test bench set up. We've also got their Big Bang X Power motherboard, which is actually the one that I use in my own system. I'm a big fan of this board, really like it. I've got a 980X Extreme Edition processor in mine. And this, this is new. This one I haven't seen before. This is a non-standard layout board. So you can see it's actually a little bit wider than a normal ATX board. And it's also a little bit longer because normally there'd be one slot here. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight PCI Express 16X physical slots. Now these aren't going to all run at 16X bandwidth. I believe this one, I'll have to follow up for you guys when I do an unboxing of this board and find out how they've managed to achieve this many PCI Express slots on a P67 motherboard. Because remember, that board is only natively going to support a single 16X or dual 8X and a single 4X PCI Express slots. Let's see what other kinds of features we've got. So we do have a supplementary PCIe six pin power connector, dual eight pin CPU power connectors for that LGA 1155 CPU. We've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Looks like a 16 plus two phase power design. And then we've got support for dual channel DDR3 memory. We've got some dip switches up here, which I'm not actually sure what those are for. Maybe they're for overvolting or something like that. I can't even begin to speculate until I have some actual specs in front of me here. Oh, and it looks like that's a 24 phase power design. My bad, there might actually be other stuff buried in there. All right, we've got our 24 pin connector in its ideal location. We've got voltage checkpoints. We've got uh, four PCI, uh, SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. We've got support for up to four front USB 3 ports and eight additional USB 3 ports on the back panel of this board. Although, I mean, really I can talk about all the stuff, all the other things, all I want, but the reality of it is, like, check this out. Eight PCIe 16X slots. So you're gonna need a special case to house this particular motherboard, but we're gonna get some pretty good performance out of the Core i7-2600K or any future processors with a motherboard like this. So I'm also gonna take you guys sort of a little bit further in. You can check out the uh, all the liquid nitrogen that is on hand for this overclocking event, as well as some of the cool camera setups that we're using to see uh, all of the, that we're using to actually broadcast live to a live audience for this, uh, for this event. We've got our control booth over here. We have live score updates. So we actually already finished the Super Pi 32M portion of the competition. And now all of the teams are about half an hour into the 3D Mark 11 competition right now. It looks like Team Pier is in the, is in the lead at this moment, but it was actually uh, Team, I believe it was Team Over the Edge that took the Super Pi 32 million portion of the competition. Let me just have a look at the scores really quick here. Uh, at 26257, yes, I believe that they were the winners for that one. So remember, the Super Pi 32M is actually only 40% of the total score, and 3D Mark 11 is 60% of the total score. Here's the uh, command center, other command center, where I'm doing my live broadcast. And right now, my partner in crime, Rajiv, from MSI, is uh, interviewing a couple of ladies. And I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to show you guys here. I'll just take you around to have a look at some of the uh, tables where these guys are overclocking in real time right now. So we've got an MSI GTX 580 running with an MSI Big Bang X Power and an Intel Core i7 980X Extreme Edition processor. Right now they're playing around with their temperatures to make sure that they're getting the optimal balance between the lowest possible temperatures and not going down too low so that they run into any instability or cold bug issues. Let's see, I thought I had someone over here who was uh, blowtorching his pot in order to uh, bring the temperatures up a little bit. You can see everything's getting pretty frosted over here. Let's kind of cruise around and see what else is going down. 
I think uh, I think one of the teams over here actually had some Volt mods on their GTX 580. So this is one of the crazier looking setups. I don't want to get in the way here. So yeah, please do step in front of me if you need to. Last thing I want to do is disrupt these guys as they maintain the delicate balance that is required for this kind of overclocking. So they're trying to get into windows right now, it looks like. Got paper towels all over, so that's uh, ghetto fabulous, of course. Look at that, you can see the liquid nitrogen that is uh, boiling away there under the immense heat load that is an overclocked Intel Core i7-980X. So thank you for checking out my video. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips. And I'm going to have more coverage coming to you guys from CES 2011 here.